Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am a pro bridal makeup artist of 10 years based in Miami, Florida. And today I'm going to show you how I got this beautiful, classic, simple but still glam bridal look. So if you want to see how my process goes, here's a look into it. Started off by cleansing her skin with some Bioderma. I love this makeup remover because it's super gentle and it's great for sensitive skin and it's not scented. To prep her skin, I'm using the Embrolease Moisturizer. This works as a moisturizer and a primer. If you're into makeup, you've heard about this product. I'm personally not a huge fanatic of primers. I only really use primers for very specific reasons, but if the skin doesn't need it, I just like to do really good skin prep. In this case, I feel like this moisturizer does everything it needs to do. To prep and moisturize the under eye, I'm using the MAC Fast Response Eye Cream. I swear by this product. I have been using it for years and it has not done me wrong for all skin types, for all ages, all under eyes. It's just really nice and hydrating, moisturizing. I feel like it really helps prevent a little bit of the creasing and it just wakes up the eye. And then just some lip balm to prep the lips. For foundation today, I used the L'Oreal Infallible Freshwear Foundation. Yes, a drugstore foundation. I have not used a drugstore foundation in my makeup kit i think i don't want to say ever but like it's very random and seldom but the reason i chose to add this specific foundation to my kits now is because i've just been searching for a specific type of foundation and this really does everything that i would like other high-end foundations to do currently i carry the mac pro longwear nourishing foundation which is very matte and full coverage I also carry the Dior Face and Body, which is matte and a little bit more sheer. And I carry also a cream, a very full coverage foundation. This is kind of in the middle. It's more of a satin finish. It's very long wearing. So it's basically what I wish the Giorgio Armani Luminous Foundation would do, except I feel like that just is a very hard foundation to make last all day and as perfectly as I would love to in Miami, Florida. So I added this into my kit, not because of the price, but because of the quality. To get that under eye coverage going, I'm using this color corrector by Catrice. I actually started using this recently. And I really, really like it. It is super brightening. If you can see, I'm using this sponge. It's one of my favorite sponges. It's basically a dupe for a beauty blender. So you can find that on my Amazon. And everything that I'm using is linked and listed below. Here I'm layering on just a little bit more and making sure I'm getting into those inner corners. That's super important because if you don't, then it might leave a little bit of darkness. And I'm just pushing that in with a brush. Moving on to cream contour slash bronzer. I'm using the LA Girl Concealer in the color Beautiful Bronze. And I know that it looks a little scary. I know that it looks a little dark, but this color is absolutely beautiful. And then here is one of my tricks. I don't do it all the time, but in instances like this, I like to grab a little bit of the foundation that I was using and buff and just blend out the cream bronzer, cream contour with that foundation and it creates such a beautiful and seamless natural bronze effect. Just look at how gorgeous and seamless that looks. I did one side and not the other just to kind of show the contrast on camera and then I always retrace my steps with a beauty sponge and blend everything out further. Then with that same cream bronzer, I am just contouring the nose, but I am bringing first that contour into the crease, and then I am applying some of that contour on the sides of the nose. It looks like a lot, but it's honestly a very, very thin and sheer layer, and I'm just kind of taking my time to lay that down in a very intentional way. I don't like going too heavy handed on this and I always like to start a preliminary blend which is what I'm doing here with a fluffy dual fiber brush. Remember that bridal makeup is all about layering and making it look very beautiful not just in person but also in videos and in pictures so that means that you have to do cream everything and then powder everything. So for powder blush I'm using Rare Beauty in the shade Happy and I go a little bit generous with it but nothing too crazy. So for my first layer of actual concealer, and yes, it's my first layer, do not get scared, but I'm taking a little bit of my MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. This is an oldie, but a goodie. I'm certain that you've heard of this concealer before because it is a staple in the beauty community, and I used to use it all the time, and I went back to it because it is really just that good. 
Now, one thing I have to say is, even though this looks like a lot because it's not a little bit, these layers are extremely thin, extremely, extremely thin. And I love this concealer because the skin is well prepped. So it's not going to dry out the skin, but it's going to keep a nice matte pro long wear effect, especially for the Miami weather. You guys have to keep in mind, I live in Miami, Florida. So I do makeup that lasts. Obviously, if I'm working on a more drier skin type or on a more mature client, I might use a little bit less concealer or I might use even more hydrating products, especially underneath the eye. By more hydrating products, in this instance, I mean more hydrating skin prep. And I'm going in with my last layer of concealer. Yes, that is basically a second layer of concealer besides the color corrector. This is a more brightening shade. I could have just done a more brightening shade, but I really just wanted to build this up. I'm also cleaning underneath the contour just a little bit and then I'm blending right away with the same brush that I used for my cream contour and cream blush. And I also go back with a sponge every single time and I think that's what makes it so that my makeup looks dimensional, layered, but still not cakey. It doesn't feel heavy on the skin, which I lay very thin layers. I buff it out with a brush and then I go in with a beauty sponge and really blend everything out to get excess product off. This is layering for longevity and for dimension 101 and it's layering without making the person look or feel cakey. This is successful layering. I wish you could have seen her skin in person and she told me herself that the makeup did not feel heavy on her skin at all. She said she couldn't stop looking at herself. So that's what I like to go for for my clients. The process basically involves a lot of back and forth going in with a brush and then blending with a sponge and then a brush again and then sponge again and adding back product where it's been kind of erased a little bit. So here I'm kind of retouching that cream blush and then I'm going to take the sponge and blend it again it's really all about taking your time and not getting lazy with the blending finally moving on to powders and going away from the liquids and the creams i am setting the face i'm starting off with the under eyes and i am setting it with a generous amount of powder i'm using some of the rcma no color powder and the huda beauty cherry blossom powder on a powder puff and again i use a very generous amount obviously not like a ridiculous amount but a generous amount and i press it into the skin i'm not doing any baking yet i'm also pressing with the powder puff on the center of the face on the nose that's really important and then with a brush i'm lightly setting the rest of the face with the charlotte tilbury airbrush flawless powder i don't even know the name of it but i'm taking that and just adjusting the rest of the face i'm all about setting the face completely this is crucial to making your makeup last and to allowing all the other powders you're going to put on top to blend very very well for powder bronzer i'm taking the juvia's place bronze duo in the shade light these are very very pigmented extremely blendable beautiful warm but not orange i'm just taking that all over and i do a combination of swiping and pressing initially i don't know if i showed it but i do a little bit of pressing before i do any swiping so i'm basically just retracing my steps and going back over all the areas that i did cream bronzer in this will not only lock everything in but it will create that extra layer of dimension which is super important for bridal makeup I'm bronzing slash contouring the nose. I'm not a fan of going too heavy handed. So I did that as lightly as I possibly could while still allowing it to show obviously. And here is where a little bit of that baking action starts. I'm baking the sides of the nose and underneath the bronzer contour area because I really want to have a very just clean and crisp look. And that little bit of bake under the eyes will also help catch any fallout if you are very intentional about how you set the under eye though you don't really have to worry about it but anyways moving on to powder blush i obviously mix them because i am the queen of mixing blushes they are mac and juvia's place blushes the names will be listed below now let's get to the eyes we're doing some brows and she has such amazing brows and i personally don't like to do too much to brows i only like to do just enough to add to the look to balance it out and again she doesn't really need too much so i just did a little bit of the benefit precisely my brow pencil 
and I did mostly the ends and a little bit at the bottom and then I took some tinted brow gel this is the essence one I love it it has a little bit of fullness and I just added it to her eyebrows I like to keep the eyes pretty simple obviously I will do more smoky or more intricate more glam looks if they are requested but my go-to eye is a pretty simple eye with a big lash or a nice fluffy long lash the first thing that I did is I took that HD concealer from LA girl the beautiful bronze color I took a little bit of that on the fluffy brush same fluffy brush that I used to blend out some of that cream nose contour well I'm just running it all across the lid with that brush and I'm blending it out as much as possible doing this will create that initial sense of dimension in the eye and that initial bit of smokiness and many people wouldn't think to do this but I like to take a little bit of translucent powder after I do that step and just set all of that in place before I go in with any other eyeshadow to start with the lower lash line I'm using that same concealer on a really small detailed brush and I'm just running that across the lower lash line and this is creating the base of the eye look with a really tiny brush I'm going in the waterline with some brown gel liner taking some of those darker browns from the makeup by Mario Master Matte palette I'm just smudging that lower lash line out a little bit the goal is to make it look a little bit smoky but not too smoky and not drag it down too far down back to the top lid I just took a little bit of the bronzer that I used on the face and I ran it all over the lid basically setting everything that I did with the liquid bronzer I did it with the powder for eyeliner I'm all about a diffused soft line so I'm taking an angled brush with a very dark brown I'm probably using the darkest brown in the Mario palette and I'm creating a very small wing it's barely a wing honestly I wouldn't really even call it a wing but it's just slightly winged out and I'm doing a very thin line and then I'm making sure that I'm getting right into the base of the lash line then I'm diffusing that brown line with that same bronzer that I used all over the lid and I'm taking it all over that line and diffusing it I'm doing that at the top and the bottom to kind of create a really diffused effortless effect and for the bottom lash line it's more of a seamless blended smoky effect doing this is really crucial if you're looking to get that where does it start and where does it end look to your eyeshadow you could have used a warm medium brown eyeshadow but using a bronzer makes it even more monochromatic and even more cohesive with the rest of the makeup look and right here i am just taking a bit of that brown gel liner and just very lightly but very intentionally adding it to the base of the lash line to just make sure we get rid of any gap not to really add a little bit of razzle dazzle to this look i'm taking some of this makeup by mario glitter it's like a reflex and this is the color of quartz i'm taking it with my finger and applying it all over but i wanted a little bit more of a warm effect so i took the shade that's in the top right of that dior palette and a little bit of setting spray and i tapped it on top i'm honestly obsessed with how that came out and now we are basically done with the eyes i did apply the lashes off camera i'll show you what they look like and they are linked down below and we are at the phase where we're doing final touches i'm adding a little bit more bronzer after the eyes are done i see where a little bit more bronzer is needed I'm taking a little bit more bronzer and blending that all over the crease just creating a beautiful perfectly blended and dimensional and cohesive look at this point i've already wiped off the bake from underneath the cheek contour and now i'm kind of just retouching that nose contour before i clean it off with some powder now to add the real finishing touches to the under eye area i'm taking my max studio fix powder in the color c2 and i'm starting to buff away that nose contour you see how i'm going kind of towards that line of the nose contour that's going to help in really blending that out and i'm also going under the eye to just further brighten and blend the under eye with the blush this really elevates the look it really takes it to another level and adds a extra layer of airbrushed effect i don't even know how to explain it but i love it and now here i'm actually taking a bit more blush but i'm taking a very pale blush so if you look back at the juvia's place palette that i used i took the palest color and just very lightly dusting it underneath the eye to kind of blend it with that brightness 
Oh, and with that same powder foundation that I just used, I'm also cleaning up the bottom sides of the eyeshadow. So instead of having to use concealer and creating harsh lines, I'm using that powder foundation to create a really crisp look that at the same time looks diffused. To highlight the inner corners of the eye, because you can't skip that part, I'm taking MAC Soft and Gentle. This is such a classic highlighter shade, so beautiful for brides. I'm going to skip the highlighter on the cheeks today, but I'm going to add a little bit to the nose. This is really going to transform the skin. This is my holy grail setting mist to make the skin start looking like skin again. So all those powders that we used are going to sink back into the skin because this luminous spray just really helps and take that powdery dry effect away. If she was keeping her makeup on for longer, I would also use a more long wearing setting spray. To finish off the eyes, I curled the lashes and applied some waterproof mascara. These are the lashes that I use. They are linked down below. And now let's do the lips. Lips, I'm using the LA Girl Shockwave Lip Liner in the color Gingerbread. Do not sleep on these lip liners. They are incredibly creamy and they are incredibly long lasting in this color in my opinion is a dupe for the kkw number two the nude one i mean those lips all around being really careful to get a nice shape i'm over drawing a little bit not too much i still like to keep it a little bit natural really taking my time with this to get a balanced lip and a really clean and crisp line and also going a little bit darker than i'm going to do the lipstick to give the lips some dimension obviously I very rarely just use one lipstick and honestly I'm surprised I only used one lip liner for this look but for my base lipstick I'm using the MAC lip mix in the color dark nude my goal was to get a beautiful nudish brownish pinky lip and I think that we achieved that and then for the lipstick that I used on top I used MAC cream cup that is such a classic bridal color but because the lip underneath is more brown a little bit of pink gave it a little bit more balance so that it didn't look so brown and obviously you have to go back in with some of your lip liner to add back some of that depth and that dimension and make sure that everything is perfectly blended and i didn't show it on camera but i did go back after this step and i cleaned the outside edges of the lip with an angled brush and some powder foundation and what is a bridal lip without some gloss? I just bought this gloss. This was actually my first time using it and I'm obsessed. I've heard so many things of the Buxom gloss in the shade White Russian. And when I was at Ulta, I saw White Russian Sparkle and I was like, you're coming home with me. So that's what I use as a gloss and I'm obsessed. And that is the look. I am so obsessed and this is the best, most beautiful bridal look ever. Shout out to my model, Karelia. She is a beauty and she was such an amazing model. This look is timeless, it's classic, and it can be done on any bride of any skin tone and of any makeup preference as long as it's tailored to their specific liking and their specific skin tone. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot. Let me know if you have any questions down below and I will see you next time. Love you.